Hello my darlings, today we have something that isn't uh, Boku no Hero or uh, Bakugo related. I think I should have said it the other way around. This is not a Bakugo story and it's not Boku no Hero related as well. Because of that, if you watch this video, it is even more important that you watch the video until the end, like or dislike it and comment something down below. This way, this video will appear to more people than just maybe the three people that will actually bother watching this video who have subscribed to me. So, uh, please do so. As a matter of fact, I'm actually kind of proud of this story. And, uh, funny enough, the stories I tend to be the most proud of are the ones that get the least amount of views. So, uh, take with that whatever you want. Um, but uh, one last thing, Albedo's best boy. I'm an Al I'm I'm I believe in Albedo supremacy. <laughs> and yeah, I love him. Uh okay, let's get right into the show, shall we? The Windblum Festival was an annual event within the city of Mondstadt. It was a time where everyone was gifting their special someone a present. Be they a love interest or simply a dear friend. It didn't matter as long as it was given in kindness and affection. Children would gift their parents. Old drunkards would pay each other's tabs. But most importantly, it was a festivity where the people of Mondstadt were able to finally confess to one another and pray for the blessing of the animal Archon Barbados. However, Despite your efforts, it seemed like you were... However, despite your efforts, it seemed like your own sweetheart didn't partake in the event. He even had commissioned an adventurer to create a present for his apprentice due to the good work she had been doing in the past year. But that was it. And he had retreated into the frozen waste that was Dragonspine. His name was Albedo, the chief alchemist of Mondstadt and the captain of the investigation team of the Knights of Avonius. You had yearned for his attention ever since he helped you recover from an illness a few years ago. Seeing his turquoise eyes in your fevered state had him appear to you like the animal Archon himself. Or at least the Archon's artistic depiction. If you had known that Barbados was right now passed out, dreaming of the time a fortune teller tried to read his fate in a pool of spilled wine in a bar called the Angel's Share, you probably would try and find a better metaphor. With your head hung low, you sat on a bench near the city's fountain. You had the feeling that maybe he'd return tonight. The sun had already begun to set. With tear-filled eyes, you stared into the sky. Feeling glad that at the very least, the people who were currently outside were too occupied with their own business and left you in peace. After Albedo had taken care of you, you tried your best to be around him. Since you already had an apprentice and assistant, there wasn't much you could do that was alchemy-related, and the alchemist didn't seem to have many interests outside of it. Luckily, though, your father was friends with a dye trader in Lewe, which eventually made you the sole supplier of art materials for him. After all, Albedo's only hobby seemed to be painting. You sighed. Maybe your little crush was hopeless after all. After the first stars appeared in the sky, you got on your feet and were about to return home, when a calm and familiar voice called out to you. Uh, excuse me. You turned around with a mild blush on your face. There stood Albedo, one finger raised, as if he was about to tap you on your shoulder, despite there still being a few feet separating the two of you. He was holding a canvas under his right arm, and through his coat pockets, you could see the tips of freshly cleaned paintbrushes. For a moment, he was quiet. The alchemist did that often. He was always just... thinking. 
And then he sighed. Relationships are quite troublesome. He looked at the ground, completely unsure if what he was doing was the right thing. They need to be constantly maintained. And if you close contact with another person, you need to re-establish them. You gulped quietly. What was he talking about? Despite that, I find it quite enjoyable having you around me, albeit always being brief moments. He sighed. I don't have many interests outside of research and normally only do two or three things per day. He tapped his right foot on the ground as if he was impatient with his own lack of communication skills. You could tell that this conversation was a little too private to be had around the people enjoying the festivities around you. Uh, his eyes immediately moved to meet yours. He was listening intently. Why don't we discuss this somewhere with... Why don't we discuss this somewhere with less people? He shrugged. Fine by me, I think. You smiled. Your heart was making little jumps. How about outside the city gate? He shrugged in affirmation. Then you walked over to him. Is it okay if I take your hand? He asked shyly. And he tilted his head. After going through three different scenarios in his head, he concluded that nothing bad could come from it. He gently took your hand in his, and you blushed hard, and suppressed a squeak. So far you could have never touched the alchemist. Sure, there were occasional brushes and taps when you were giving him things, but... This was a whole different level. It is a pleasant evening, he mumbled loud enough for you to hear, after you two sat down in the grass outside of Mondstadt. You smiled at him. He was deep in thought. What are you thinking about? Your research? He nodded. Yes, but not only that. He blinked. I am unsure of how to proceed from here. You bit your lower lip. Maybe tell me what you wanted to say to me earlier? He sharply inhaled. <laughs> you know I don't have many interests, and it is difficult to pry me away from my research. Despite my lack of reactions, I have to admit, I do still have emotions. He blinked. I saw a clump made its way up his throat. Was he about to perch himself? No, it was just a feeling, not actual bile. Curious. He wished he could write this experience down, but he was self-aware enough to know that this may ruin this moment. Knowing this month's festivities, I retreated into the Dragonspine Mountains and started painting. You nodded patiently. You knew how difficult emotions were for him. But you couldn't help but silently beg that the thought you had right now was going to be true. I drew you a picture of the ruins. With shaking hands, he grabbed the canvas to his left and offered it to you. With widened eyes and a heavy blush, you took the painting. It depicted a perfect drawing of the floating pillar in the dragon spine, with gusts of wind skillfully drawn around it. Your heart felt as if it stopped for a moment. This meant a lot. Probably more than you could fathom. I am fully aware that I lack certain experience when it comes to relationships. Um... He exhaled. You gave him a kind look. After a minute, you asked, Is it okay if I finish for you? He nodded. 
so you were unsure if you should even give me a present to begin with, and or whether or not this painting is enough. He turned his head towards you in surprise. Yes, was all he said. Albedo, this is the best present I've ever gotten during the Windbloom Festival. He sighed quietly in relief. But why? I guess that question is more important to me right now. It's you, he said with no hesitation. I wanted to give you something, something that has sentimental worth. You blinked and took a deep breath and asked him straight up. Do you like me? He scratched his ear. I am torn. Relationships require so much work. Distracting work. And too much thought. The maintenance is... worrying. It seemed like he had just as much anxiety about this than you did. And you bit your lower lip. If your thoughts are not running in your head yourself. Since when did you like me? He blinked twice before answering. Purple, he said. is a rare and expensive color. And you are the first person to give me some of it. During the last Windbloom festival. I think since then I had grown fond of you. And I find myself wishing you'd be there with me when I paint. I think the saying is, that present meant a lot to me, and it made me consider, uh, things. A blush came onto his face. You actually managed to make the alchemist blush. Oh, I seem to have gotten a fever, he said. Your smile turned into a grin, and you gently moved your hand around his chin, pulling his head towards you. I like you too, Alberto. I like you a lot. He grabbed both of your shoulders and leaned forward. A rush of never-before-felt emotions overwhelming him and gently pressed his lips onto yours. His lips were a little cold, yet smooth and soft, and it felt like you were gliding through a summer breeze. He wasn't too forceful, and his tongue remained in his mouth, but you could feel something similar to passion had enveloped his mind. After your mouth separated, he asked, What now? He never thought he'd get this far. Helplessly, you smiled. Well, uh, uh, how about an experiment? His eyes widened unintentionally. Self-experimentation in uh, love and uh, affection, and how it affects your state of mind and work? It sounded more like a question, but you desperately wanted to use his hyper-intellectual lingo, so he'd agree on being with you. Some physical research. That... that sounds like a great opportunity to gain knowledge. You smiled. Well, uh, would you like to dive into the research now? He nodded. Yes. Before leaning into you once again for another kiss. This time more demanding and passionate. 